So when I'm caught in the right state, my whole body, soul, and spirit is given over to the Lord. To get ready, I can't allow everything to bother me. I've got to forget some things to get ready. Lord, I want to be ready. I want to straighten this out. I got to get this right. I got to please you. I got to repent of my sins. I got to obey your word. I got to adjust myself according to the precepts and the principle of your word because I want to be caught in the right state. But you can watch and pray and get ready. Belief is not enough. Take your belief to another level. I got to seek the Lord while he may be found. God bless you today. Today my thought to you is caught in the right state. Caught in the right state. There is a lot of things happening in our lives, in the country, in the world, in Canada, in all the lands of the world but after all is said and done we have one appointment that we cannot afford to miss one appointment by the grace of God that we shall not miss by the goodness and the mercy of the Lord and it's to meet him in the air to be caught up to meet him in the air therefore the Bible admonishes us how this will happen and the state of affairs of our life for us to meet the Lord in the right frame of mind, in the right state of our soul. It's very essential, it's important for us not to be caught up with the things of the world, but to be caught up with the things of God. Whether or not you like it, there's nothing you can do about it. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming if you plan for him or if you don't plan for him. Jesus is coming if you are ready or if you are not ready. Jesus is coming if you like the idea or if you don't like the idea. Jesus is coming if you are upset at Christianity or if you are not upset at Christianity. Jesus is coming if you're born again, and Jesus is coming if you're not born again. No matter what you do, Jesus is coming. But we are admonishing you today to be caught in the right state when Jesus appears. That's your responsibility, to be caught in the right state when he appears. And today I want to share with you some scriptures and some thoughts about the coming of the Lord Jesus and how we should prepare to be caught in the right state and in the right frame of mind and in the right state of our soul to be caught in the right state. The writer let us know that we should prepare to meet our God. How do you prepare? We got to have the right state of mind. The right state of mind is essential for us to be overcomers. The right state of mind is essential for us to conquer the enemy. The right state of mind is essential for us to serve the Lord with gladness and serve him with a willing heart and serve him with all our capacity. Right state of mind is essential. The right state of mind is essential to be caught in the right state. We have to have the right condition of our heart. Our heart has to be caught in the right condition. And then our soul has to be in the right position. So when I said caught in the right state, I'm not talking about the United States or another state or whatever state it is. I'm talking about a condition 
that your heart, your mind, and your soul must be in and should be in when the trump of God sound. When the trump of God sound, my mind should be controlled by God. My mind should be focused on God. My mind should be given to God. Jesus should be the author of my mind and my thoughts. I should condition my mind to serve him. I have the battlefield and the battleground of my life is in my mind. So I got to have to make sure that mind is completely surrendered to God. When that mind is completely surrendered to God, then my heart condition will change or adjust according to my submission to the word of God. When my heart condition adjusts according to the word of God, then my heart will change and be conditioned, as the Bible said, creating me a clean heart, O God, and renew within me a right spirit. When I get my heart and my right and my mind stayed on the Lord, then my soul now will be in a position to be able to allow the Lord to work in me, work through me, wash me, cleanse me, and purge me. So when I'm caught in the right state, my whole body, soul, and spirit is given over to the Lord. The next major event on God's calendar is the rapture of the church. This appointment you cannot afford to miss. We cannot afford to miss the, mix, the next major event on God's calendar. You can miss your train. You can miss your bus. You can miss an appointment. You can miss the promotion you're supposed to get at work. You can miss a lot of things. But there's one thing I'm admonish you not to miss is the rapture of the church. So the Bible admonishes us how we should prepare our hearts. And the Bible said, watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man doth come. In the book of Matthew chapter number 25, there is a parable of ten virgins. And the Bible says five of them were wise and five were foolish. He said, they that were foolish took their lamp and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessel with their lamps. So that tell me when you're wise, you prepare. The foolish took their lamps and they took no extra oil with them. But the wise took their lamp and they took extra oil with them. Preparation is important for those who are watching. When you're watching, you prepare. Watch ye therefore. There also in chapter number 24, the Bible let us know in chapter number 24. It said, watch ye therefore for you know not. What hour your Lord doth come. In the book of Matthew 24, verse 36, if you could turn there, it said, But the day of the Lord cometh, but that day and that hour knoweth no man. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angel of heaven, but my Father only. But the day of but as as were the day of now, so shall it be. So shall it come up the Son of Man be. For in the days of now, there were that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving into marriage until the day now was taken to the heart. There's nothing wrong with eating. There's nothing wrong with drinking. 
There's nothing wrong in being married to another man if you're a woman and being married to a man if you are a woman, but not man and man and woman and woman. Just have to clear that up. So people were caught up doing things as usual and had no concern for the appointed day. You were doing things as normal. If you know that Jesus is coming soon, would you continue as normal or would you adjust your life for the appointed day? When you know that Jesus is coming, you apply your life for preparing to meet him. But they knew not, verse 39 says, until the flood came and took them away. Why? There was no preparation. So also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Two shall be in the field. One shall be taken. The other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken. And the other left. And then he said, what you there for? You got to be prepared. You don't want to be the one that is not taken to be with the Lord. What you there for? For you know not what hour your Lord does come. The Bible let us know that we should watch. Watching is a preparation method to get yourself ready so that when you're caught up to meet him, you are ready to meet him. Watching is important. Watching. The Bible said watch. The Bible said watch. Let everybody say watch. Let everybody say watch. Say it loud. Say it louder. Watch is very important. It is so important that when you're watching, you will be ready. When you're watching, you will be ready. The next command the Bible said to us was for us to be ready. Therefore, be ready for in such an hour as ye think not. Let's go back to the scripture, the same scripture. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not hour when the Lord cometh. And verse 43 says, Who is, but know this that if the good man of the house had known in what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and would not suffer, suffered mean aloud his house to be broken up. One of the most violating thing is for you to come home and see that somebody was broke, has broken into your house. There was a time I had a friend. He was a good friend, but I don't know why I got into his mind. But when we were away, he broke into a house, found out later it was him, and he stole so many personal things that he know I like. And he was one of my good friends. He broke into my house and stole. If you had just asked for some of those things, maybe I would have given it to him. So I felt so violated. I felt so, so um, betrayed. It's, it, it, it's a very bad feeling for you to walk into your house and find that it was broken into. It's a very bad feeling. So you won't allow or suffer your life to be taken over by the hand of the enemy when you are not watching. But when you watch, you prepare. As soon as the thief come by and he sees some light flicks on or somebody is home or somebody is moving around, he will run away. At least most of them will. Not all of them, but most of them will. They will run away because somebody is watching the house. The Bible let us know that our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And the temple of the Holy Ghost should be prepared for the unction, the presence, the power of God. So because the temple of the Holy Ghost has the 
presence and the power of God, we should also allow our bodies to worship God only. And watching means we prepare our hearts, we prepare our mind, we prepare our soul, and we're not caught up with all other things so that when the Lord shall come, we are ready to go with him. We will not allow our life to be broken up because we are watching. Verse 44 says, Therefore, be also ready. That's all it is. Oh, Lord. That's all it is. It doesn't matter what happened in your life. I'm not saying it doesn't matter because it didn't matter. So get, don't, don't take this as a psychological analysis. What I mean is whatever happened in your life, Make your best effort to make this appointment. People talk about you. Things bad happen to you. Unfortunate things happen in your life. Lots of turmoil and grief and the list goes on. But no matter what, I got to make this appointment. The, when I am ready, I ready my heart. I ready my spirit and I ready my soul. If there's somebody that I need to forgive, no matter what it takes, Lord, give me the heart and the mind to forgive that person. If there's somebody that hurt me and I have been trying to overcome that for many, many years, Lord, give me the heart of the mind that I will get my heart ready. Lord, if somebody really betrayed me and do something evil against me and even abused me, Lord, give me that mind and that heart to get my heart ready. Because at the end of the day, if my heart is not ready, my wedding garment is not on, I am not ready for the meeting with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is going to shut the door and say, I don't know you. But Lord, teach me how to pray. Teach me how to fast. Teach me how to seek your face. Teach me how to prostrate myself. Teach me how to repent. Teach me how to get this life right in my heart. Teach me not to harbor resentment. Teach me, Lord, to let some things go. As the Bible said that we press towards the mark of the high calling of the Lord that because we press, we should lay aside every weight and every sin that is set before us. And the scripture went on to say, for getting those things which are behind I reach forward to the things that are before because I gotta get, forget some things to get ready to get ready I can't allow everything to bother me I gotta forget some things to get ready Lord I want to be ready therefore be ready for in, in such an hour as you think not the son of man cometh I want to be caught in the right state. Verse, next, next slide. Be therefore ready also for the Son of Man cometh in an hour when you think not. There's a principle in the scripture. When you see things repeated over and over and over again, it's an emphasis for you to take heed. And taking heed, the Bible is re-emphasizing it's important for you to be ready to meet your Savior. Whenever things are repeated over and over, it's an emphasis for you to take heed, for you to be ready. So if you read throughout the scripture and you throughout the New Testament, which we're dealing with currently today, the Bible said, watch. The Bible says, be ready. Several scriptures say, it, gives, it comes in parable. The parables of the, the steward, the, the parable of the, the person that want to search for hidden treasures, searching for what is valuable. It's talking about readiness and investing in what's important. It's okay and it's good if you have $10 million worth of assets, but it's better if you have $10 million plus your soul is safe. It's okay and it's good if you have all the wealth of the world and you don't have Jesus, you have just wasted a lifetime. 
No matter how much you accumulate in this world, make sure Jesus is a part of your life. So the Bible said, watch and be ready. The Bible said, watch and pray. The Bible says, take heed. The Bible said, be sober. The Bible said, be vigilant. And the Bible said, do not sleep. This is not referring to the sleep in rest. This is referring to sleep in your soul as ignorance, as never con connecting with God, as your soul has never been connected to God and you're sleeping. Wake up, the Bible say, and arise and Christ shall give you life. Only in Jesus you will find true life. Only in Jesus you will find real life. Only in Jesus you will find the life that needs to draw us closer to him and get us to be caught in the right state. I cannot be caught in the right state when I refuse to address the issues of my heart. When I start to address the issues of my heart, I start to take personal out housekeeping and say, Lord, I want to straighten this out. I got to get this right. I got to please you. I got to repent of my sins. I got to obey your word. I got to adjust myself according to the precepts and the principle of your word because I want to be caught in the right state. Let's give this scriptural example here in the book of Luke chapter number 12. We're going to read a few verses here. Luke chapter number 12, verse 35. Let your loins be girded about with truth. When it says let your loins be girded about with truth, it means apply the word of God to your life and to your heart. Simple. Apply the word of God to your life and to your heart. Let your life be girded about with truth and your lamps be, let your, light be gird, let your life be girded about with truth and your light be burning. Apply the word of God to your life and show, let your life be an example. There's a lot of people that says, I am a Christian, I am a Christian, I love Jesus. But as they leave the congregation, as they're alone by themselves, they have the dirtiest mouth you can ever think of. They, they say the worst things, they do the worst thing. Some, some people can be so vicious that you're wondering if they have ever read their Bible. So vicious. If the, if the word of God does not change your life, nothing else can. If we don't submit ourselves to the word of God to allow it to change our life and be girded a mind with our, our hearts with truth, nothing else can. It's not the knowledge of the word. It's the application to your heart. When I apply the words to my heart, I let my light burn. That's what the Bible says. This is a practical step of being watching and being ready and being sober. And verse number 36 says, And you yourself like men, like unto men that wait for their Lord, when he will return from the wedding, and when he cometh and knocketh, it may open unto him immediately. <laughs> everybody knock at your door, and all of a sudden everybody fly, trying to fix up and get everything ready. Mommy's coming, mommy's coming, look what we did. No, you weren't ready. You were doing some bad things. That's why you're running. But when you're ready, you open the door immediately. That's what the Bible said in verse 36. You open the door immediately. You open the door immediately. So when the trump of God sound, I'll, I'll be caught up to meet him immediately because I don't have to send a message over to 
Sister Brown and tell her that I apologize for the way I talked to you and for what I did to you and how I said the wrong things. I apologize for my actions. There will be no time for that. When the trump of God sound, there will be no time. Make right now. Do right now. Do it every day. And verse 30 says, Blessed are those servants. You are blessed when you prepare. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. You are blessed when you are ready. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And if he come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so blessed are those servants. Whatever time the master come, the Bible said bless when he comes and you find you watching, waiting and ready. You're blessed. That's scripture. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have allowed, suffered me not allowed, allowed his house to be broken through. But be therefore ready also for this, this is the earthly analogy and giving you a spiritual meaning. Just like how you watch your house so that not a, nobody can break in. It's the same way you should prepare your heart so when the trump of God sounds, you are ready. Be therefore ready also. For the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. Oh Lord, prepare my heart to meet you. I want to be ready for you. Be therefore ready for the Son of Man come at an hour when you think not. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us or even to all? And the Lord said, who then is a faithful and wise steward? Whom his Lord shall make ruler over his house to give them portions of meat in due season. A faithful steward. So everybody says stewardship. Is responsibility. Say it loud again. Stewardship is responsibility. Say it like you believe it now. Stewardship is responsibility. When somebody gives you something to do and you have a responsible job to do it and you slack off on the job, you will be charged. There is something more important than a job and it is your soul. Blessed is the servant who when the Lord cometh, he finds so doing. Lord, I am watching, I am praying, I am seeking your face. I, I need you every hour. Lord, there's a lot of things bombarding my mind, bombarding my house, bombarding my life, bombarding from the left, bombarding from the media, bombarding from friends, bombarding from all kinds of things. But I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus. I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus. I'm going to keep my minds on Jesus. I am going to keep my mind eyes on him. No matter what come, no matter what happen, I'm going to keep my eyes on Jesus. I'm going to keep my minds on Jesus. The devil may be coming your way, but keep your minds on Jesus because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He's able to keep you through all difficulties. He's able to keep you through all hardship. He's able to surround you with his mercies and surround you with his goodness and surround you with his love. Don't take your eyes off of him uh, even though the storm is raging uh, remember that he's standing by you even though it's difficult here remember that he's standing by you let the storm cloud rise uh, let the billows roll uh, but I got my mind stayed on Jesus let's read about uh, to verse 48 blessed is the servant when the Lord come, he finds so doing. Doing what? Doing what a steward does. A steward takes responsibility for their calling. If the Lord call you, 
Don't be caught up in the things of the world and doing everything that the world does and ignore the call of God. Let God be the director of your life. Of a truth I send to you that he will make him ruler over all that he has because he has been faithful. But, and if the servants say, now, the first servant was the servant that obeyed and waited and watched. Now, this is the servant that have a different mindset. So remember I told you that you got to have the right state of mind, the right condition of your heart, and the right position of your soul. The way you think will eventually affect the condition of your soul. If you think that you can fix everybody's business and get even with everybody and hurt everybody and tell everybody a piece of your mind before you know it, you have no mind left. Because that's the mindset of a disobedient servant of a steward that does not take responsibility. Your responsibility is to obey your Lord. Hallelujah. Your responsibility is to obey your Lord. Who's your Lord? Jesus. Let me hear you confess it. Who's your Lord? Who's your Lord? Your responsibility is to obey your Lord. Let's look at the servant that didn't obey his Lord. But if that servant may say in his heart, see where he said, he's all thinking about it. Yes, some people think that they're so smart, they can outsmart God. But some people are so smart, they outsmart themselves and lose out on, on, on the promises of God. But if that servant say in his heart, my Lord, the delay is coming. And shall begin to beat the servants and maidens and to eat and drink and be drunken. Then the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he look not for him. And an hour when he is not aware and will cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. So a believer fall into the same category of the unbeliever because they refuse to take responsibility for their calling. And the servant which knew his Lord's will, they know what to do, they know what is right, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But, uh, but he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripe shall be beaten with a few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given of him shall much be required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. You have a responsibility as a steward of God, as a child of God, don't ignore your calling when the trump of God sound. You want to be caught in the right state. Right state of mind, right frame of mind, right state of your soul, and the right state of your heart. Let's continue to work on our state of our heart. Jesus reminds us that he is the resurrection and the life. The Bible points out to us that we should be ready. And the Bible says here in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 15 and verse number, 20, verse number 12, it says, Now if Christ be preached that he raised from the dead, how say so among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? And if there's no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And, and if Christ be not risen, your preaching in is in vain, and your faith is also vain. 
your resurrection completely and totally depends on the resurrection of Christ Jesus. Your faith, the, your whole life, as a matter of fact, depends on the resurrection of Christ Jesus. And the Bible says here, yeah, and we have found witnesses, false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up. If so be that Christ is not raised. And if Christ be not raised, then, and, and if dead is not raised, then is Christ not raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. And you are yet in your sins. Verse 18, then they which are also fallen asleep in Christ are perish. But that's not the case. That's not the case. Because we are having our hope in Christ. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of men most miserable. Now Christ is risen from the dead. And become the first fruit of them that slept. I thank God for this statement in the Bible. But Christ is risen from the dead. And because he rose, you can rise. And because he was transported to heaven, you will be transported to heaven. Because whatever happened to Jesus, if you trust in Jesus, it will happen to you. No matter what the devil say, no matter what the devil do, he does not have any enough power to prevent you from being caught up to meet him. Jesus is your savior. Jesus is my savior. Say it together. Jesus is my savior. I always say here, if you can't rejoice about sins forgiven, don't rejoice about anything else. Don't rejoice about the car. Don't rejoice about the new wife. Don't rejoice about the new house. Don't rejoice about anything else. If you can't rejoice about sins forgiven, don't rejoice about everything. But I can rejoice about sins forgiven because Jesus is risen from the dead. And some sweet day, some glorious day, I'm going to be caught up to meet him in the air. I'll be caught up to greet him because he's my savior, he's my God, he's my king, he's the Lord of Lords, he's Jehovah Jireh, he's Jehovah Tiskenia, he's the great I am, the everlasting father, and the prince of peace. I love him, I love him, I love him. I will praise him because he brought me out of the mire clay. I will praise him because he turned my life around. I will praise Praise him because he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Up from the grave, he arose with a mighty triumph over his foes. Hallelujah. He arose the victor over the dark domain. He arose forever with the saints to reign. He arose. Let's rejoice because he is the king of kings. Stretch your hand to him. Stretch your hand to him and worship him because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fears are gone because I know he holds the future. Life is worth a living just because he lives. Because he lives. You have hope because he lives. You have strength because he lives. You can make it for tomorrow because he lives. You don't have to be discouraged or depressed because he lives. Shut your hand and praise him. But now, is Christ risen from the dead? My opinion is the devil didn't know about the resurrection. 
He thought when Jesus died on the cross and he stretched him out and they nailed him, he thought he was in glee. He was so happy. If that's he went to hell and started a party and said, This is it, man. We got him, we got him, we got him. But I thank God for divine secrets. I thank God for divine secrets. Divine secrets. <laughs> oh, while the party was going on, Jesus stepped in the midst and tell that old slew foot, devil, I need the keys. I need the keys. I, he got the keys from the devil and he got the keys of death. Hell and the grave. That's the one to worship. That's the one to get excited about. He got the keys. Let's worship him. Worship him for the resurrection. Worship him for the resurrection. Worship him for the resurrection. I'll be caught up to meet him. I'll be caught up to greet him. I'll be caught up to meet him in the air. I'll be caught up to meet him. Jesus, you are everything to me. You have provided all my needs. Lord, when I thought there was no way, you led me to a brighter day. Jesus, you are everything to me. When they were coining these songs, people feel a testimony in their souls of how Jesus brought them out, of how he strengthened them, of how he helped them. Hallelujah. He's the great I am, the everlasting father, the prince of peace, the great eternal wonder, holy counselor, hallelujah. Zion righteous counselor is the great, is a great I am from the splendor of heaven to a world down below from a manger to an all rugged tree the savior in love was seeking for me he was seeking for me he was seeking for me amazing grace how sweet the sound that same a wretch like me. I don't know if you were a wretch, but I was a wretch. That same a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I can sing that song because I have a savior. And he's sweet, I know. He's sweet, I know. I can sing that song because I know where he brought me from. So we say, up from the grave, he arose. Woo! With a mighty triumph, oh, his foes, he arose a victor of the dark domain. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary the blood that gives me oh Lord if you know what I know you'd rejoice if you know what I know you rejoice the blood that gives me strength from day to day lord i am weak today but tomorrow i'll be strong because i'm trusting in your blood i am trusting you it will never never everybody say never everybody say never never lose its power 
Since my man came, death by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Hallelujah. For in Adam all die. Even so, in Christ shall all be made alive. Stretch your hand and worship him for that. Hallelujah. The last enemy that we have is death. Verse 26 says, the Bible, the last enemy shall be destroyed is death. Have you ever noticed how death is so final? Yeah. I think one day I was home. I think my dad passed away in about 2003, there about. One day I was home and I think I, I took up the phone that I was going to dial my dad. Because I just want to hear his voice, just want to talk to him. Then you remember that he's, he's gone. That is so final. That is so wicked. The only thing that you have after death is some memories. Your memories. So I always tell my wife, take as much as pictures as you want. Some, some, some occasion you can't replicate. We go on family vacation. We take our pictures. We enjoy, we enjoy taking pictures of ourselves. We enjoy ourselves while we have the chance. Because when someone passes, the only thing you have is the memories. That's only you have to have memories. They have done so many good things and you have gone so many good places. You have done so, so much together. But after all is said and done, the only thing you have is memories. So I'd advise you to make the memories pleasant ones. While they are here in life with you this time, don't make their life miserable and go to the graveside want to jump in the grave. Some people, they are so miserable and they are so evil and they've done you so much and when they come to your funeral, they cry the most. Acting as if they love you more than everybody else when they, they were they were like Alexander the Coppersmith <laughs> did me much harm. Do the good now. Give the flowers now. Display the right characteristic now. Behave yourself now. Be true now. Show love now. Be kind now. Show care now. Take care of each other now. Because death is so final. Final. Jesus says in St. John chapter 11 and verse number 23 to 27, verse 24 to 26 in particular, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. If we turn back to the presentation, let's just finish off. Turn back to the presentation. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he, who is speaking? Jesus, the resurrector. That's the promise he gave you. He's going to raise your body from the grave. And how do you know? Because he rose from the grave. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe it thou this. Some people get caught up in a tizzy. But, but my grandmother died. My friend died. This person died. No. There are two deaths. There's a natural death and there's a spiritual death. There's a first death and the second death. You want to make sure that if you are partaking the first death, the second death have no power over you. The second death is eternal damnation. The first death, if you're a Christian, is just called sleep. Sleep. You're waiting. That's the first natural death. That's just sleeping. 
But when Jesus is your resurrection in life, he is your resurrector and he's your life and he's going to get you resurrected. So therefore, we have to be caught in the right state. When you're caught in the right state, you adjust your belief. You adjust your psychology of things. There was a time that I believe, I be, even though I believe in God, I have some idiosyncrasies that wasn't, it was too, how, how do I describe it? It was too callous. It was just too rough. And it was just too cut and dry. But I was going while I was working for about 30 years at the hospital. Sometime we used to drive in to work. While I was driving, I turned on this program. And it's come up at the time just right while I was driving. It's called Focus on the Family. And it talks about the psychology of people, even though they are believers, and what's happening and going on in people's life. And after a few years of listening to that program, it changes my mindset. And I begin to study, and I begin to apply, and I begin to look at concepts of how, even though people are saved, and they have been baptized, and they have been filled with the Holy Ghost, there are things that happen in their life that sometimes... It's not their fault in the way they were brought up. Not everybody's going to be perfect. So we have to address our belief system. And there are some people, there are some, some men that they're so, so rough. They don't even believe in taking care of their wives. Just rough, rough talk. Rough, rough slam door and everything like that. Do you think the man Maria Co? Do you think the, the, the lady marry a lion? She wasn't looking for a lion. Where is the kindness? Where is the gentleness? Where is the fruit of the spirit? You call yourself a Christian man and you're still rough. You need to be sanded down. God gave you the most precious gift in your life except for salvation which is a wife and you push her there you push her there you rough her up you talk bad to her and when she have low self-esteem you wonder why the bible let us know and that that's just one area that I'm admonishing our brothers and I'm admonishing our sisters and I'm admonishing those who are in relationship Change your belief system. You don't have to fight every day. You don't have to. I, I'm going to show you I'm the man of this house. You, you, don't, you don't have a pants on. Why you have to show anybody anything? God gave you a precious gift. A queen. The most tender loving person. And you want to rough up that person? That's just one of my belief system that I didn't believe that, that, but it really curbed that belief system. I said, man, you don't have to be rough to be a man. You don't have to rough. If you want to be rough, go join the army and do some rough things in there. There's a lot of rough things you can do in there. A lot of rough things. But the most precious gift that God gave you. I'm talking to the brothers for the time being. The most precious, take care of the gift. See your wife as a queen. See your wife as a gift. See your wife as somebody precious. And let me give you a secret. Don't try to understand them at all. If you're going to get upset because she said do this and then she changed her mind and then she do something else and change your mind, don't worry about it. Just say, oh, whatever you need, dear, I'll help you. <laughs> when God was making her, you were asleep. You don't understand everything. Just bless her and love her. Bless her and love her. Bless her and love her. God gave you the gift of life. 
And don't worry about your wife or your husband should be just like me. No, you're not going to be the same if you are the same trouble. You must be different. That's why I can't for the life of me understand how a man can kiss another man. Me can't understand it. You can't be the same. Change your belief system. Prepare the state of your heart. Prepare the state of your mind. Develop conviction. Develop a preparation to meet the Savior. It's going home time. It's going home time. It's going home time. Those of you that have been through some hard relationships and still you th stick it out and you're serving God, I lift my hat to you. Give them a hand, God. You have been strong. And I say to you, prepare yourself. Return our beliefs into action of faith. Even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead. Yea, a man may say, that was faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I'll show thee my faith by my works. Thou believe that there is one God? You do well. The devil also believe and tremble. But you must do better than the devil. The devil believe and he still remain a devil. But you believe and you change, you prepare, you watch, you pray, you get ready. The devil can't watch and pray and get ready because he's a devil. But you can watch and pray and get ready. Belief is not enough. Take your belief to another level. I got to seek the Lord while he may be found. But thou will say, oh, man, that faith without works is dead let us just read this scripture and finish off but I would not have you to be ignorant what does it mean ignorant lack of knowledge not to know the knowledge that you have of the word of God please 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 Apply it to your life. The knowledge you have of the word of God as a steward of responsibility, apply it to your life. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, who die in the Lord. That he sorrow not, even as others would have no hope. So you have a hope, we have a hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and raised again, even so them also would sleep in Jesus, shall God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that they which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent or stop or hold back those that are in the grave. For the Lord himself, he promised to save you. He promised to keep you. He promised to deliver you. He went to the cross for you. And he's coming back for you. All he's asking is that you be faithful and true. The Lord himself is going to come. And he's going to come, so to speak, to knock at the door and see if you're ready. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So if you're not in Christ, you're not going to get up first. If you're not in Christ, you're not going to rise first. If you're not in Christ, you're not going to be caught up. If you're not in Christ, you're not going to see him. The dead in Christ shall rise first. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort, comfort one another. Oh God. Some of you have been through so many things. 
I myself haven't been through half the stuff that you've been through. And sometimes I'm thinking to myself at home, I wonder how I would handle that. I don't know if I could or if I would. I don't know what would happen to me if I've gone through some of the things, loss of a young child, loss of a loved one so dear to you, traumatic accident, traumatic things. Some people who have overcome from abusive lives and they're doing well. Some people have recovered from a life that is would totally destroy anybody. But the Bible says here, when you're going through this hardship, when you're going through difficult times, when their tears are wet in your pillow, when you don't know what to do or to say about a certain situation or a certain circumstance, and there is nothing that can be said or done about it, the Bible said all you have to do, comfort one another with these words. What words? Jesus died for your sins. You gave your life to him. He cares about you. He said he will never leave you nor forsake you. He's coming back for you. He loves you. Is your savior, is your God. No matter how rough the storm gets, Jesus said, He will stand by you. Hallelujah. Comfort one another with these words. These words that say that you are my child. You are my child. Even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Don't fear any evil because I am with you. Comfort one another with these words. When you go through the waters, they shall not overflow you. When you go through the fire, you shall not be burned because you are precious in my sight. I just want to read that scripture, Isaiah 43. But that's said, the Lord that created thee. Everybody said, comfort one another with these words. And form thee, oh, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. It costs more for your redemption than what you're going through. It costs more for your redemption than what you're going through. Let's all stand. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know how difficult it is. I don't know. Sometimes you may tell yourself you don't want to make another step. I don't know if the enemy tried to trick you and said this Christian pathway is not for you. But comfort not one another in these words. Your redemption costs more. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. What's your name? John. Cynthia. Orville, Thomas, what's your name? Call it by name. No one mine. Who you belong to? God. Praise God. When you pass through the waters, I am not saying it. God is saying, when you pass through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When you walk through the fire, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know. But I feel this message today is for somebody. Be caught in the right state. There's a lot of things that when you're going through the fire, you want to burn up everybody. You want to shoot everybody. You want to curse out everybody. Things just happening. But if you maintain the right frame of mind and the right state of heart, the, 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 the condition of your soul will be applied 
to be in the right state, right position. So if the trump of God sound, you will be caught in the right state. When you walk to the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. That's what matters. When Jesus stretched out on the cross, it was God in the flesh that stretched out for you. Thy Savior. I give Ethiopia for thy ransom. And Seba for thee, Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Why? Since thou was precious in my sight. If you're not precious in anybody else's sight, you are precious in God's sight. God loves you. God cares about you. So set your heart in house in order to be caught up to meet him, to be caught in the right state. We're going to pray. The Bible says, Blessed and holy is he at, at, that had part in the first resurrection. Upon such the second death had no power. And Jesus said, What I say unto you, I say unto all, Watch. Jesus said, surely I come quickly. And my reward is with me. Jesus said, he which testified these things said, surely I come quickly. What you should say in your heart now, even so, come Lord Jesus. Say, come Lord Jesus. Let's read the last part. Even so, Come, Lord Jesus. Come, and I want to be caught in the right state. Come, I want my condition of my heart to be in the right state. Come, because I want the position of my soul to be in the right state.